And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the Duke Lord's Legacy. I've already reviewed the Duke several years ago, but this is a newer version of it, includes one of the expansions, and you may never have heard of this game before, so I thought it would be a good time to bring it back out and talk about it. The Duke, simply put, is a classic abstract strategy game. If you like chess, I think you'll like the Duke. If you like excellent games, you'll like the Duke. It's really well done. Here's how it plays. Each player is going to start with a Duke piece and two footman. Uh, you're going to put your Duke in one of your two starting spots with the two footmen on either, you know, next to the Duke. So you can see this is a way that both of them have set up. One player is going to go first, and on your turn, you can move a piece on the board, or you can draw a town at a piece from the bag here next to your Duke if there's a spot open. So let's pretend that's my opening move. So I draw, and what is this? I drew another footman. All right. My opponent decides to move next. So let's rotate the board to their side. They decide that they're going to move their duke. So we're going to look at the duke piece here. And we look on here. The duke can only move to the left or right, but it can slide. It can move as far as it wants in a certain direction. So maybe the duke will move over here. Once you do that, you'll flip the duke over. You'll now notice that the duke can slide forwards or backwards. So that's there. So back to me. On my turn now, I'm going to move one of the footmen. So maybe I'll move this footman up one. This allows me, the black dot allows me to move to that spot. So move up one, flip it over. You'll now notice that it has a slightly different movement pattern. It can now move diagonally or can move to this spot here. It can't jump to that spot. So if someone's in front of it, it wouldn't be able to move to that spot. Well, my opponent now, who is also me, is going to draw a tile from the bag. And they got the wizard. Look at the wizard. The wizard can move one space in any direction. It's like the king in chess. Putting it next to their duke, so they decide to put it here. It can't be gotten by the footman, but who knows what will happen. So on my turn now, I'm getting tired of, you know, having only footmen, and so I'm going to draw a new tile from the bag. And I get a pikeman who can only go diagonally forward in those spots. I have to put it next to my duke, so I have to put it there. Over to this character. This character is now going to move the wizard here, which will flip the wizard over. And now the wizard can jump to these spots, which means it can ignore people in between. So move one away, jump two away in any direction. Now, I move there knowing the footman can't get me because the footman can only go here in this direction. But you always have to watch your opponent's pieces as you're moving and manipulating the board. And so it's just going to be consistently moving around or adding pieces until you capture your opponent's duke. If, for example, my next turn, the pikeman didn't go, I might jump here with my wizard capturing the pikeman. Now, the footman can't get me. This footman can't get me. This footman can't get me. The duke can't move, but I can't catch. Well, I would have flipped over, you're right, when I did that. And so I'm going to win the game, or my opponent's going to win the game. There's all sorts of pieces. Here, for example, is a knight who can move in those directions or jump ahead too, or move back or slide as far forward as they can. The bowman here can move one space in, any, in those three directions or jump two spaces in those directions. Here the bowman can shoot those spaces. It's a ranged attack without actually moving to them. Here you can see the seer moves in different directions. The priest can move diagonally, very similar to the bishop in chess, except on the other side they can't do that. They can move one and then jump two spaces in those other directions. Other pieces here. A light horse can uh, shoot these two spaces, jump here, or slide back as far as you want. On the other side, slide forward as far as you want, or move one diagonally. And so there's a lot of different pieces, and I don't want to be labor to point. Let me look at the Royal Assassin. This side's pretty boring. They can slide in all four directions, and here they can move one back. I'm sorry, this is the boring side. You can only move one back, but then phew, 
who can slide in every direction. The pikeman, you already saw him. Uh, the champion here can hit the spots next to him. There's a ranger who can slide forward diagonally. And so there's various pieces. The marshal has, if you notice, these circles have this mark on them. That's called command. And they're able to move pieces in that spot. So you can move somebody else maybe to a new spot where they can be more deadly. The game also comes with a set of tiles that you can move to play like a different scenario where the bad guys will get Mordred and Morgana. You, know, you can see have some pretty powerful moves. Morgana has this fear that she's able to put into pieces. Mordred here has these jump. He can slide and jump over pieces. So as far as you want, really powerful attacks. While the good guy will get Percival, Arthur, Guinevere, a fort, Merlin, and Lancelot. Not, and these will replace different pieces and such. It just changes the game up and makes it slightly uh, more asymmetrical. Right now it's very symmetric. So that's how the game works. You're just going to keep pulling pieces. If you ever need to pull a piece from a bag and you can't, well then you're tough. You're out of luck. You just got to keep going. You must move a piece or you must add a piece next to your duke. Uh, once your duke is captured, you will lose the game. So there's a movement reference card that comes with here and it shows how each of the different moves, move, jump, jump, slide, slide, command, strike, that dread, and defense, which I do not believe there's uh, a landslide has defense, which means you can't be attacked from that direction. But the base pieces don't have defense. And so you have all that listed here. And there's also special abilities that can be done. Uh, but for the most part, the game is very, very simple. The components for this game are great. You have a nice big bag full of tiles. You know, they're nice wooden tiles. My only complaint might be that these dark tiles are a little harder to see than the light tiles, which is why when I was showing the game off, I was showing you the light tiles, but still, these look good. Having the reference card that tells you exactly what everything does is nice and easy. The rule book is really clear as to what you're going to do. If there's special abilities on a tile, this one, two, three, four, which, by the way, don't worry about them. They're only really in the special game. This, the rules explain them very carefully. The whole thing is just really nicely done and looks great on the table. So much goodness to talk about the Duke. First of all, you want to know how peace moves? Look at it. Now, sometimes it does re you know, require you to pick a piece up and like, well, if I flip it, it will do this. And there's going to be some thought in this game, as much as there is. But I'll play this 10 times over chess because not only is there unique, cool pieces in this, like, wow, this one can move like this and it can slide backwards. But also, there's a little bit of randomness in the game. Not a ton. Well, I guess not a ton. There's a, a decent amount by which pieces you pull. But still, you need to get those pieces on the board and then use those pieces properly to win the game. Yeah, so I drew a footman first in that example there. Well, that's not the greatest thing, right? Footmen aren't that great, but I can start using them and spreading them out, and my more powerful units can come out later. Move my duke into a spot. Now, that was a bad move, really. I shouldn't probably have kept my duke squished up like that because an enemy could maybe swoop in. And I've seen duke games that move very quickly. But the idea of the move being printed on the piece and having all these unique pieces, along with pulling pieces from a bag, makes this game fascinating. Now the question is, do I like it better symmetrical or asymmetrical? Well, one thing they did really nicely with this version of the game is they made the base game really basic. It works really well. This is the way to teach people the game. Play with King Arthur and Mordred and all them after you've played the base game a few times. But when you add those in and make it asymmetrical, it's really neat. You know, here we have two different pieces and you have all King Arthur and his knights, which is fun thematically, but they move in different ways. But you know what? As much as I like that, I'm okay with the symmetrical side because it never is symmetrical. That's the thing. The Duke is a symmetrical game that doesn't play that way. It's a game that, because the pieces will come out of the bag in different orders, and that makes it different every time. You can read a whole book on why your opening move should be the pawn in front of the king moving forward. You, you, you can read whole books on that. I don't know what my opening move in the Duke should be because it depends on maybe what that first piece I pull from the bag is. That's fantastic. Abstract strategy games are neat to me because they make you think, they make you do forward planning. But I also don't want a game that when my opponent sits down, he already knows all these solve moves and maneuvers. I want there to be a little bit of, hey, here's how the battlefield changes and deal with it. 
and that makes this one superior to chess in my book and it's why I like it so much. It doesn't hurt that it's high quality pieces, easy to teach, but mostly fun to play. The Duke is phenomenal. It's a game that you'll be talking about after you play it and you'll want to play it time and time again. A great two-player game, The Duke Lord's Legacy. Dice Star Judgment, excellent!